So spatial awareness is the ability for a device such as the HoloLens 2 to be able to map the physical world. And when I say map, it basically creates a 3D representation of your physical world into the digital world. Why is that important when it comes to mixed reality? Well, let's say that you had a hologram that was basically a picture and you wanted to place that picture perfectly on a surface. Well, because it created a map of the physical world, it's going to allow you to basically place that picture perfectly right on a surface. I could also do the same thing with different holograms that maybe I want to place on a table. Well, the reason that it works is because we have a spatial awareness. So in today's video, I want to show you everything that you need to do in order to get it working in Unity with MRTK. I'm going to show you what you need to do to modify the profile, how we can get it working in the editor, and also how we can push it to the device. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up MRTK with the camera component. So we're going to go ahead and go into Add to Scene and Configure. And what this is going to do is going to create a component called the Mixed Reality Toolkit. It's also going to add the play space and also the camera. This way, we don't really have to do anything manually. I will always use that option. The next thing that you need to do if you want to configure the spatial awareness, which is what we're going to be using for this video, is I want you to go in into the Mixed Reality Toolkit. And if you go into the Mixed Reality Toolkit, you're going to see that we have already a default Mixed Reality Toolkit configuration profile. What you need to do is we're going to be using the XR, which is the Extended Reality Management. So there's two different plugins. One is going to be the Legacy SDK, and the other one is going to be the new SDK, which is the XR Workflow. So let's go ahead and choose this one. When you go to that one, you're going to see that we have multiple options in here. And for the most part, everything has been already been, you know, populated and preset for you. Well, the default properties of this profile doesn't include the spatial awareness. So what I'm going to do in order for us to, to do that, we're going to be copying this and then basically creating our own profile. So what I need to do is just basically give it a name and just call it HoloLens 2. Let's actually do, do it by name because I'm going to be doing multiple videos. So I'm just going to say spatial awareness. And then we'll just leave the, the other part of the name intact. Let's go ahead and click on clone. And it's going to create them under custom profiles. I might create a folder here and put them in there. That way, with multiple videos, we don't you know, start running out of names. I'm actually going to be putting this in GitHub so you guys can access it. So let's look at some of the options. So I'm, going to I'm going to go ahead and enable a spatial awareness. As soon as you do that, it's going to have you know, some of the options already predefined for you. It's going to you know, select the default XR SDK, which is the one that we're going to be using. There's also one for OpenXR, which I'm not going to be covering on this video today. I did other videos about that, and there's also one that you, is used for the legacy system, which we're not going to be used, so we're going to use the one that they provide. I'm also going to be cloning this profile. So in this profile, what I'm going to do is we can just say spatial awareness, and then we just say clone, and it's going to dump it into that same directory. Now that we have that set, we have multiple options in here that we can actually configure. You can, you know, in this case, this is going to be what's called an observer. This is what's going to allow us to create a mesh. Basically, the device is going to create a mesh in real time of what you're seeing through the camera. So we're going to leave everything in here default, and then I'm going to change it in just a minute. But I want to show you how we can run it just as it is. And the way that it works as it is is because some of the settings are already set up, right? It already has display settings with a wireframe. It has occlusion. There's also general settings that tell it how frequently the mesh is going to be generated where the observer is going to be, which is basically a shape that is going to determine at which location you're going to be looking through in order for us to create the mesh. It also has physics settings and then level of detail, which we can overwrite later on, but I want to show you how this works just by using it as default. The other thing that I'm going to do before we keep going is I want to change the camera settings because this is using, it doesn't have the, I want to use a black color just like you know the other demos show for MRTK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also clone the camera profile, and then we can call the we can make this one a special awareness. We can just call it default. I'm going to use this default uh, profile for every other video. So let's just leave it as this. And then if we go into here, you're going to see that we have multiple components for the camera. I'm going to go into my display settings and change this where it says skybox. I'm actually going to be using color, and that way we have everything you know everything black. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is all we need to do is just run this. So there's multiple ways that we can run it. We can either deploy it to a device, so I can run it through what's called the Windows XR 
plugin remoting. I'm actually going to use this one, and this one works really well if you're using the right versions of Unity. So make sure that you use Unity 2018.4.24, which is the latest because I tested everything with that version and everything works perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the emulation mode. I'm gonna change it to remote to device. I'm gonna specify the IP address, which in my case is gonna be 192.168.0.119. And then you can tell it whether you want to send video information, audio information, I'm just gonna leave it as default. And then I'm gonna go ahead and test it and show you the results. So now on my device, I need to do one thing, and that is downloading the holographic remote, which I already have, but in your case, make sure that you download it to the device. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. So this is gonna open up the holographic remoting. It's going to serve an IP address, and then we're gonna be using that IP address, which is the one that I already typed. If everything works, and should be able to connect. So I'm gonna go into Unity, hit connect. And now we should, shouldn't see anything on the Holo, HoloLens yet because we haven't hit play. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if this is working. So I'm gonna wait until everything renders, and I'm gonna start looking around. And you can kind of see that now we're starting to generate a mesh. And this is using the spatial awareness system to generate and also the, the observers that I have already set up. And you guys can see that everything, you know, it's rendering the mesh. I can look down and, you know, there's a table there. It's going to detect the surface. I can also look at my hands, which actually works really cool with the, with the holographic remoting. So, so everything works good so far. So let's go ahead and do something different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my special awareness system. I'm gonna be changing a couple more properties. Let's go into my XR SDK Windows Mixed Reality. And what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna be cloning this. And this one we can just call it, again, special awareness. Let me go ahead and try that again. And I'm gonna say special awareness. And I'm gonna clone it. And once you clone it, you should have access to all the different properties that we have in the XR SDK. Windows Mixed Reality, a special mix of server. We have a runtime prefab that we could specify if we wanted to, you know, have a runtime mesh that is already created. This is in the case that we already scan a room, we could actually download that with a Microsoft portal that we can, you know, if we wanted to do that, you necessarily don't need to do that. And then I can also update the update interval. This is gonna be in seconds, so I'm just gonna set it to one second. So every second we're gonna be getting and basically updating the mesh information on our device. I can also change the observer shape if this was an extensionary observer, meaning that I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't need to update it while I'm moving. Basically the observer will be idle and then as I'm looking around, there's really no need for the mesh to keep track of the, the observer because it's going to be a stationary. So if you wanted to use that, you could do that. What I'm gonna show you how to change is gonna be the level of detail settings. You can either specify custom, which you have to specify triangles per cubic meter. And you can also do quartz, which is going to be the most performant for your HoloLens experience. You can also do medium and fine if you were basically reconstructing, let's say you wanted to scan an area and you wanted to be fine detail, I would choose those different options. I'm gonna do medium. And I'm also going to display the mesh, which is what this allows you to do. If you do occlusion, it'll actually just do occlusion. If you do visible, it'll do, you know, it'll make, give you a wireframe and also do occlusion. I'm also going to be changing the material here. I'll just do a special material. It's actually gonna look a lot better. And then I'll go ahead and connect the Windows Mixed Reality Remote. Let's go ahead and hit play. And let me show you how this is gonna look. As soon as I hit play, I'm going to be able to see the meshes. So you can see that I'm looking through the screen. You can also look at it in Unity. So if we were to change this, you're gonna see how everything is getting reconstructed. So I'm moving my head. And if I go here, so kind of gives you a really cool indicator of where the walls are, where, you know, where my table is. I can also scan, you can also see my hands. So another thing that I also wanted to show you is how a mesh gets generated in real time and how we can download it. So right now I'm connected to my device via IP address. So if you go to the browser, go to your device, you're gonna see that we can access the portal, which is the Windows device portal. You can also look at, look at views. You can also look at the 3D view. You can see how I can move my head as I, you know, as I move around my room, which is really, really cool, right? So let's say that I wanted to start updating, you know, the, do a spatial mapping. So I can start actually scanning my entire area and it's going to generate it here on this view. Why is this powerful though? Because I can actually download that as an OBJ file and import it into Unity. So I can move around and I start scanning everything. 
on top you're gonna see, you know, you're gonna see a mesh of, so you can see here we have the 3D screens, we have obviously the actor, which is me in that case, we have my light, which is actually sitting right over there on the back, and it's updating in real time. The cool thing with this though is actual, it actually gives you different options. So if you wanted to look at, you know, stabilization plane, which is what I'm looking through, and some of these terms, I don't understand them to be honest. You can also do a first person, which is actually really cool. Let's make this a little bigger. You can also, if I go back, now I think that, yeah, I think that looks better. You can also look at show details. I don't know what that gives me, but it gives you, you know, different information about the mesh that is getting generated. But the cool thing with this, if I wanted to save it, I could just go ahead and hit save. And like I said, it's gonna generate an, OB, an OBJ file. And this is a file that you can bring into, you know, any 3D application. We can also bring it into, so let me go ahead and close out of this. We can also bring it into Unity. In Unity, especially the MRTK components have this really cool, this is basically a mesh hook server that is going to run within, within Unity. So you can modify these, clone these, and basically add it as a runtime, a special mesh. And it's going to generate it in runtime and show it in Unity. I can also drag it and drop it here. And obviously it's going to show it there. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about this or any additional questions uh, as it relates to a spatial awareness, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.